<laughs> hey! In this episode, I'm going to show you how to make the coolest playroom right under the stairs. I think we're going to increase value in this kitchen. This is not acceptable. And that is money in the bank. This is where it gets fun. Fire in the hole! <sighs> it's not the time to be putting out the big dollars. Thank you, hero. There's another tool you won't need to buy. Perfect, every time. One of the most underused spaces in the entire basement is right here under the stairs. This is an awesome opportunity that you have to create a place for your kids where they can be messy and dirty and creative and wild, and it's not going to make a mess of the rest of the house. So what we're going to do in this episode is show you all the important elements of how to design something like this space and then how to build it so your kids are going to just love you. Well, here we go. Now we might have to do something with the height of this door. It might be a little bit low, but Here's the basic idea. Underneath every flight of stairs has got a huge amount of space. And most people use it to put old tile or paint that they're never gonna use again under. Let's face it, that stuff just goes in the garbage. So if you get rid of your garbage, now you got room to put in the playroom. And the only thing you have to do in here that's any different is just extend your flooring, put some drywall on the walls, and then paint the walls in one of these two products. This is whiteboard paint. It's a two-part paint mix and it does about 60 square feet. This is chalkboard paint. Again, it's a one part, but it does the same about 60 square feet. Either of these products are a lot of fun for kids, but in this particular case, our client decided that since the rest of this basement is gonna be mostly adult space and pretty decent looking furniture, having markers out is just a little bit too dangerous. Chalk is always washable, so they're gonna go with chalkboard. So every playroom is gonna need access. And one of the things you wanna consider in your design is well, I guess if it was like me, I had an older brother. So if you put in a door, you better have a second way to get out of the room because my older brother used to lock me in there. So you don't want to have a lock on there, but you want to have another access point. So we're going to have a window that's going to be wide open and a door just in case we have friends over who aren't too friendly. We don't want to traumatize your kids, right? Now this is not the light switch for the light in the room. The light in the room is actually inside the room. Again, <laughs> just thinking of your child in case something goes wrong, I guess the only reason I thought about it a lot is that was me as a kid. So, we're gonna make the frame the same width as any standard door. We're gonna put in a regular door jam, door casing, and then we're gonna use a regular door, but we're gonna cut it down to fit. That'll allow us to put a passage knob set, which can be operated from both sides. Everything's gonna function like normal. Very simple and easy. The fun part here is, we're gonna make outside of the area here look like the outside of a house. It's gonna be shiplap, a little bit of trim, just gently nailed to the wall and in a few years down the road when your kids outgrow the structure you can just peel all of this off the wall they'll touch up and paint it back in and now it's just going to be a storage room again but it's dual function so in the meantime while they're young which is only for a little while have some fun and make them have a really awesome time well as you can see <laughs> this sort of thing is a real labor of love but the things we do for our kids eh? All right, now, generally speaking, whoop, you need to learn how to measure. There we go. Now, as you can see, working in a space like this can be difficult. The other wall has got wiring running all the way through it, so I have to bring everything through this hole in the, <laughs> for the door. A little maddening cutting everything in half size, but it gets the job done. The other features you're going to want to see is we're not covering the actual stairs. It's a curved landing here. The amount of energy it's going to take to put a ceiling on this area is absolutely incredible. So in this case, the client said, leave the ceiling off. It'll give them lots of height in here and the illusion of space, which is fun. We also have a marine light on the other wall right there. And that's a special kind of function light. So the, the glass is actually really strong and tempered behind a, its actual metal framing. That's just for safety so that you can't have an accident. Electrical code requires something like this in a small space or a closet. So we're more than happy to comply with that. And then all you gotta do is just let your imagination go crazy. This could be a castle or a fort, or it could be a ship. In this case, it's gonna be a house, but you get the idea. 
<laughs> you know, working in this place makes me feel like a kid again. <laughs> but look at all the space we have in here. This is awesome. So somewhere down the road when your kids outgrow the space, no problem. You got room in here for a floor to ceiling cabinet. You can do this as dry goods storage, or you can start becoming a prepper. <laughs> so really, we're almost finished. We have to roll our chalkboard on the wall, a couple little pieces of finishing trim, a couple more pieces of flooring, and we got to trim out our window and door. And then we're going to work on the outside. Hopefully, by the end of the day, this is all finished. You'll notice that we made the intentional decision not to put a transition in this door area. And traditionally speaking, in a space this big, you want to transition every room just to help to minimize your risk of buckling of the floor during expansion contraction seasons. But this area here is right in the middle of the house. Shouldn't have a contraction issue. And we didn't take it all the way to the end of the stairs. It looks like it, but it's about an inch and a half shy of the step. So since boards usually grow in their length, not their width, there's actually a lot of room in here for this floor to make adjustments with temperature and moisture content. So we're really not that worried about it. And let's face it, most transitions that are made for laminate flooring are really just paper wrapped MDF and aren't likely to stand up to the wear and tear that kids with shoes running in and out of here is gonna bring. So by doing it this way, we have just the finished floor, which is a really high quality laminate and has a nice 30, 40 year finish on it. And it should outlast the kids. And welcome to my tiny house tour. We're giving a quick little update on our project underneath the stairs. As you can see, it's starting to look a lot more like a little house, which is kind of cool, because that is the point. What we've gone with is a New England style home, very simple square trims and a little shiplap wall to mimic some siding. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna cut the door and install it just on a piano hinge, nice and simple. I don't wanna have uh, gaps here where fingers can get stuck. So by going with the piano hinge, it makes it a little bit safer for the little kids. And then we've also gotta finish our trimming on the inside, get the chalkboard walls put up, and we'll be able to finish this bad boy off today. Uh, as you can see in the back, I had to run a, shot, a vacuum line. The clients are gonna use an inline vacuum system down here, even for cleaning on these floors. So we brought that line through, we have to build a little wall for them. Got a little bit of work to do, but the idea is simple, the plan is straightforward, and we're gonna knock this off in the next few hours, and then we'll be able to present it to the little one tonight. And we have a note. Wow, love a client who knows how to communicate. All right, I usually get emails, but this is cool. I got a picture. Cool, so they decided they only want chalkboard on the alcove section, and they wanna paint the rest of this another color. No big deal. That is no problem at all. Easy to accommodate. All right. Oh, and one more thing. All of this woodwork here, it's not attached with adhesive. It's just pin nails. So at some point down the road, when the little gaffer outgrows the need for a playroom, they're able to just pull all this off and putty and fix the holes, and then just give this one wall a quick paint job. So we're gonna leave enough paint behind to do that touch up later. And if you wanna learn how to do that kind of paint repair, you can watch our paint video. We'll put a link in the description. Now that we're done the trim on the doors and the windows, I'm gonna just show you here. I built a little ledge, and this is just a piece of one by three. Just use a piece of casing on some one by three, nailed it together, stuck it in there. I think it'll function really well. It'd be nice to give them a little bit of, this is where the chalk goes kind of attitude. <laughs> Hopefully that'll help. You know, everything has a place and a place for everything, right? And then we're gonna just use one by twos, and we're gonna continue on with this whole New England style corner wrapping, and we're gonna nail everything together because it's just a playroom, we're not going to get carried away with puttying all the holes and painting all the trims. We'll try to keep it somewhat simple, but nice and clean and tidy. And there we go. So we want to get our first coat of chalkboard paint on. Now, I'm using this uh, simple chalkboard paint. It's at my paint store. It's a solvent-based flat chalkboard paint. So what that means, of course, is that you don't want to shake it. All righty. Oh, 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 look at that. That is just thick as mud. Now, I have not worked with this stuff before, but I was aware that it was around and I've been dying to give it a shot. And what we're gonna do after we're done making all the chalkboard is I'm gonna take a piece of one by two and go floor to ceiling. So I don't have to worry about how this goes on right now. 
I'm not gonna cut it in or cock the trims. I'm just gonna add the trims later for effect. Now it suggests on the, on the label that you put two coats on, but it also does 90 square feet. And since my area here is so small, I'm probably gonna end up going three coats. That way I can avoid using a primer. Well, this is the question, right? It suggests in the product literature that you should have a prime surface. But since I'm going with three coats, I am not concerned. I'm just gonna make sure I give this two hours before I come back and it'll be completely dry and ready. Yeah, here, let's check this out. Let's see what this looks like to roll. <laughs> of course, we'll use a nice little tight piece of nap roller here. Good, good, good. Microfiber is awesome. Don't load this up too fast. You'll spray the stuff all over the place. It's just that thick. All right. Let's have a quick look at what this will look like. <laughs> that is awesome. Oh my God. Dude, I'm starting to think of using this all over the place. You know, you could use this on the back of a, of a door or in the pantry to keep your grocery list up, up to date, you know? I think every kid in the world should have a wall in their basement with this paint on it. Oh my goodness, this is awesome. If you want to spark your creative juices in your kids, this is the way to do it. Give them chalk and license to be creative. So like a lot of homeowners, they've got old doors or you've got a damaged door and you got to replace it. So if you go to the store to buy a new door, it'll be 80 inch tall in most cases. And if your hole is smaller than that, you're going to have to learn how to cut it down. So depending on what's going on in your house, whether you're added multiple layers of flooring or if you're going to be like us and we're adding a smaller door to access under the stairs, it's a really simple process to cut down the door to get the exact height that you want. So we're going to show you the three easy steps to get this project done and it'll make you look like a pro. 39 inches and to keep it simple what I do is I'll just mark both sides okay and that's simple the important aspect of this door is it has a core installed in the bottom and if you just cut it down and stick it in the hole then you're gonna have a huge open space in there for all kinds of critters to make homes and it's gonna be nasty long term first we're gonna save the bottom part of the core we'll Always important to cut all the way through. Do I even have enough? Nope. There we go. First of all, I guess we should always adjust the depth of the blade so it'll cut through the whole door. <laughs> that works a lot better. Now I've cut off a little bit of the excess to make it manageable. you can see that's how the inside of the door is made, which is why it's so important to be able to close that up again. That's why we save the bottom of the door. We're actually gonna salvage the core and then reinstall it into the new hole. So first we're gonna protect the surface. This is just your basic painter's tape. So there we go, step one is cut down the door. Step two, of course, is to retrieve the core. All right, all right. Always good to know how to remove all this junk. And if anybody is thinking, wow, they make doors like crap nowadays, just gotta remember, this all happened because we were trying to save trees and recycle the paper. And this is one of the solutions I came up with. Right. Step one was cut the door down. Step two was clean up and prep the core, cut it to size. Step three obviously is glue it all in place. Put a nice healthy bead on both sides 
so that when you put your door core in, you're maximizing your contact with the glue. Okay. If you have clamps, you can put a couple of compression clamps on there. What I like to do is I just get a little bit more creative, throw a little bit of tape. You'd be surprised how much strength is in a piece of tape. Done. Let that sit for about 20 minutes. We're ready to hang. If your door is a little bit too wide for your, your gap, the reason I'm covering this information is because a lot of people are changing the doors out in older homes and they're different size widths of the door than they are now. This is what we do in construction. We constantly change the norms. So every time you want to repair or fix something, you have to buy something brand new. You can't just buy something and stick it in. You have to go to some elaborate expense, right? So I'm going to show you the secret. And this is what we call a planer. It's a hand planer. It's a very portable tool. And what this does is it can cut down. You just adjust your dial for the thickness that you want to remove. This sucker spins really fast and it has one three inch blade that rotates a few thousand times a minute. And if it touches any part of your body, it will remove it. So <laughs> having said that, hold the plate flat to the door that you're cutting. All right, not on an angle or you're gonna mess up the bevel and you just turn it on, and then in one pass, you just go right across the door. And if you haven't removed all of your pencil, do it again. Okay, well, it's been 20 minutes. This core is firmly in place, and we are ready to install this door. Now, because this door is so small and it's just made for access under the stairs, we're gonna use a piano hinge to install it. All right, so the most important aspect or element of this little fake child's house is the front door. It's important to make it look like an actual door. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this little cut down door in the space and we're gonna add a nice handle to it, but we're gonna paint it over solid red. So it kind of looks like a cute little home and this is gonna be a lot of fun. What we have to do is install the piano hinge. Now this piano hinge comes from the store, various lengths. So we just pick something that's gonna work with what we got here. You want to set this hinge in the fully open position so it sits flush on this corner. And that'll help you identify where you're installing it. Now there's a lot of holes here. We're not carrying anything with any weight, so we don't need to put a screw in every hole. But you do want to alternate so that the screw that's on this door is not the same location as the screw on the other side going into the jam, or you're going to have too much restriction there, okay? So what you do is go like this every four. Let's make sure we're in the right spot. All right, one, two, three, one, two. And we're gonna put screws all the way down. Now design-wise, this is really easy because we have a jam, but we also have this solid wood one by three, and the piano hinge actually fits perfectly in that context. Okay, so what we have to do now is raise it up to about a quarter inch from the top, and then to make this easier on me, I'm gonna stick a couple of shims underneath just to raise this up off the floor until I get this to the perfect height. And now we're gonna throw in two screws and then try closing the door and make sure that we're somewhat square. Oh, here we go. Okay. All right. That is not too bad at all, considering it is a hidden, actually, not liking that. That one's out too far at the bottom. So this screw actually pulled my piano hinge a little too far forward, and that's fine. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set this back now That'll help keep it square. Now the door itself is almost perfect. And because it's for a child's playroom and not the front door of someone's house, I'm not gonna invest a lot of time trying to make it absolutely perfect. The benefit of a piano hinge is you can install a door just about anywhere. The downside, you don't have a lot of ability to adjust the door after it's installed. 
So I can't pack out the hinge, I can't make adjustments like a cabinet door. So you gotta try to make your frame exactly square and plumb and level and, uh, but in this kind of scenario, I think being this close to perfect is money in the bank. <laughs> okay. What we need now is just to paint this thing bright cherry red, get a cabinet door handle on it. And we're gonna put a little bit of a cabinet latch on here just so it has an end and it's not gonna be pushed all the way through by accident and cause this thing to be ripped out. Loving it. Okay, well here we are. We're opening up our little quart of paint. And this stuff is really red. <laughs> no, that's not the name of the color. Wow, this is called red gumball. Um, you know, leave it up to the paint world to come up with these fancy names. But it does kind of remind you of something you stick in your mouth when you're a kid. Uh, we are going to just take a little bit of this out. My God. Now, word of warning here. In the world of red paint, there is not too many red paints on the market that don't cause a lot of frustration. The reason being is in order to get the red color, they lose the ability to have a lot of pigment in the paint that doesn't allow the light through. So it's very translucent until you get to about coat five or six. <laughs> so if you want the true color of this, you're committing yourself to doing quite a few coats. If you want to cheat a little bit, you can go with a little bit of a gray primer, but you will affect the color at the end. What we're going to do is we're going to just use our brush, get that on here, up to the hinge. And maybe if we're smart, we'll open the door a little bit so I don't get it on the jam. That'll be really interesting to cover up later. There we go. And we're going to use our technique and paint from inside the brush, right up against that hinge. Nice. Wow. That is going to be spectacular. <laughs> I can't wait to show you this when it's all finished, but that's going to be at the end of the video. You know, one of the coolest things about having a basement is you've got a flight of stairs. Everybody in the world can turn underneath their stairs into a fun place for their kids. Let's face it, if you're renovating the basement, it's because you've got kids. You're either gonna stick them down there or you're gonna create a new living space where they can feel free to be creative and make a bit of a mess and you can keep the upstairs clean for when you have company, right? So why not? This is really simple to do. Follow the steps in a program like this and you will have your kids thinking that they are the most important people in the universe. And let's face it, they are. So it's all good. A little bit of sweat and tears in here and you've got an awesome space. And when they're done using it, it's still a great storage space down the road. So why not? So listen, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to share this video and inspire other people who are making places to live in their basements and help the kids out, all right? Uh, if you want to see a couple of other videos and similar to this, we have our previous one. We did a bathroom renovation, if that's what you're going to interested to. Or if you want to see how this whole basement project turned out, that one's going to be coming up real soon as well. So click the link at the end of the video and we will see you in the next time. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Reality Renovision. If you're new to our channel, then I suggest you subscribe to the channel over here. Don't forget to hit the bell icon for notifications so you'll be told every time a new video comes up. And if you'd like, you can click the link right here and you can binge watch all the episodes that we have on our playlist. Amazing information, everything DIY and decor and renovation and remodeling. Thanks for joining us.